Today I want to talk about inputs, specifically how you can get real world values into your Arduino, into your Simulink model, and then do something with that. Uh, specifically for the Mercurino project, uh, it would be taking certain functions from my car, like you know, if the light's on, if the engine's running, and somehow letting Arduino know that this is on, or this is actually running. Uh, so here, you got your little Arduino board. Um, it's, you could have several, you have several options of how to let it know. You have your analog, analog inputs, which I try to usually use because it keeps my digital input output pins free. You could use digital input output pins, obviously, but then you couldn't drive more outputs. So let's now have a look at the Arduino Simulink model. So this is the model, or the sub-module, I should say, which is here. Um, and the functions that are from the car or from the vehicle that I want to monitor are the high beam sensor, the break beam sensor, the top beam sensor, and the low beam sensor. So originally I had what's called opto, uh, opto isolators in there, and basically they sensed uh, the 12 volt or anywhere around 12 volt from those functions, and then uh, through a uh, basically your infrared diode it would emit light and then conduct on the other side. So it's electrically isolated, that's the important part. Because what you really don't want to do is somehow get 12 volts into your uh, Arduino. So that worked well, um, but uh, I also used voltage dividers uh, simply because then I can actually kind of monitor the voltage. And the whole thing um, was, was, you know, approached very conservatively. So even if, you know, the car's voltage was 18 volts, which would be very high, you know, that typically is the case, you know, if the alternator has a problem or something. Um, even then, it wouldn't go above the 5 volts after the voltage divider in order to protect the Arduino. So make sure we do that. Um, so here, let's talk about the model really quickly. Um, these are my four uh, analog inputs. So those are analog input pins on the Arduino. Um, the, this is the pin, this is the sample time for this this uh, specific one I've chosen uh, 5 milliseconds, uh, so that, you know, that's, uh, what, 10, 20 times a second. Uh, that's more than enough, you know, for, for any reasonable uh, response time. I mean, that's faster than you can, you know, than you can push your button. Um, so here are the four, then these typically will go and say, hey, uh, uh, the input, so the 5 volts is divided in 1,023 or 1,024 steps, um, you know, and that's from 0 to 5 volts. So I don't really need that much of the split, so what it really is a gain. What the gain does is it simply converts the 1,024 steps to a 5 volt voltage. So whatever is in this line here is basically uh, an actual voltage, or very close to what it should be when I go there and would measure for the multiple. Um, then I compare... Uh, into a constant, and this constant is 2. So basically I say, if this analog input is higher than 2 volts, and this is just, it's a little bit arbitrary, because typically you should hover around 0, but you know, we want to we wanna get away from any kind of uh, fluctuations, and so I chose 2. Because anytime this is on, it will be anywhere, the, the voltage divider is set up, so it will be around 3.5. Um, and, and given that it's 3.5, I, I chose 2, because I thought that was a good value. So, what you have with voltage dividers and analog inputs is they might bounce a little bit. Like, wh when this turns on, it's not going to go from 0 to 2 in one step. It's actually going to increase a little bit and then, you know, jump around a little bit, hover on top, and then go back down. So, in order not to confuse the model, what you need is something, a deep, you need a debouncer. There's hardware debouncing, you know, with capacitors and uh, inductors and so on. Uh, I, I'm not really going to go into that, you can find that obviously on all kinds of sites, you know, Arduino.cc, and they have a description there. I chose, since I have the processing capability, I choose to, chose to do it uh, software-wise. And this is, a, this is a state flow uh, model in Simulink. So let's go in here and see what this does. Um, this is relatively simple. So this is the default state, it comes into this state, and the button is off. Um, and we see, you know, L on is zero. That makes sense. So. Then we go into, the, here's the normal, so it goes in here, it goes in a normal state, and then it basically waits until the switch is 1. You know, the switch is 1 when that is above 2 volts. So it says, hey, you know, it's above or equal to 1. Th that is true. I could actually put equals equals to 1, but that's a, um, that's a Boolean. 
So it's like a zero one. But anyways, so it goes down here, goes into the on state, and then checks if what's happening. If does it stay on for longer than zero point zero three seconds? That is very short. But what that really does, it gets rid of those fluctuations. Let's say you know it fluctuates up and down. It would uh, it would go back to zero and you know would go go left, go this way, go to off state. And it goes back to the on state and it would jump around in here. And what this monitors is if it does jump around for you know for a third of a second, then there is something wrong with the button. Like it just keeps jumping around. So then we would detect that fault, and uh, that fault, you know, I haven't really done an output video, but you can put an output here and say, oh, you know, you have a sense of fault. That's bad. So that's one way to get rid of it. I haven't really hooked it up. I really haven't programmed it fully yet. Because here, I, you know, I could say, you know, display some kind of output or, or make an LED flash or whatever you want to do to let yourself know, hey, there's something wrong with my input. Um, and also to protect, obviously, whatever functions after that, so the output. Because if this is jumping around on, off, on, off, on, off, some relays or some function, that's not good. So that, that's one way to protect it. But let's say, you know, it does stay on um, continuously, then here, and by continuously, you a very short period of time. Um, then it goes to actually the on state, and then this will be turned on with uh, L on equal one. And then only and only if, if you release that button basically here, it will go back to the off state, and after a certain period of time, it will go back to the off state. And the same here, you know, if, if, if it turns off and for some reason it keeps jumping around, it will also go into false state. Um, this is the debounce. So what you have at the end here is. Uh, the high beam sensor output, this goes to, to the upper model, and from here I drive my logic models. So this is this is important. Um, here, fault, 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 you have those four fault outputs, I put them in an OR gate, and then, you know, a sense of fault. So the, this will basically mux those signals, or well not mux, uh, we'll say if either one of those buttons is fault, this one turns true. And once the sense of fault is true, you know, I can do something else. Let's say, you know, I disable some models in order to protect the whole system. So, you know, no lights or no functions going off unpredictably because that could often be very bad. Okay, guys, I hope they gave you an overview of my Simulink sensing module. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I post uh, more information on the Mercino website, uh, links below. Um, you are welcome to ask any questions. Uh, I'll try to respond and uh, yeah, please uh, comment subscribe and uh, have a great day. Bye.